What's going on guys? Another push session going on here at uh, Iron Heaven in Omaha, Nebraska uh, with your favorite uh, non-IFBB pro, I, at least I hope. Um, so a couple of things uh, moving on with uh, more continuity in my training. Uh, at least that's what I'm trying to demonstrate. Uh, starting off with the same exercise that I had four weeks prior. Flat dumbbell press, making sure I don't burn myself out on an insane amount of uh, of uh, warm-up sets. I want to keep emphasizing it's very important to not um, blow your wad on uh, warm-up sets, right? You want to keep them just for that, for warming up. So I do very low warm-up, actual warm-up sets and a couple of high rep feeder sets just to get the joints, tendons, ligaments, all that. Uh, ready for some of the heavy pressing that's going to occur. So the first work set was with 130 pound dumbbells and uh, did pretty decent with those. Um, and then went to 140s just because I wanted to touch 140s and just, you know, see how they felt. And uh, they felt every bit of heavy that I thought they would, right? So. It, it was it was a little brutal it wasn't terribly terribly brutal but it, it was enough to you know what I mean wake me up and uh, put me in check right so you know I do what I can on these I'm training fast it is early in the morning and I only got about five hours of sleep um, could I have gotten more if I trained at night eh, probably it's hypothetical uh, but looking at my set performance, I don't I don't think it too much matters. So I need to stay in the 130 pound range So I can have this form cleaned up to where I would want it to go uh, We're still working with a reps in reserve range. So I took pretty much everything uh, either to one or zero um, Which again if you looked at any previous videos my one to zero isn't it? It isn't a true zero. It's not a true failure because I don't have a uh, a training partner to help me spot or to push out that last rep. So I'm probably leaving some reps on the table. But with training alone, I will use RIR uh, with uh, the gauge of one to zero RIR. Um, I want to emphasize again that RIR is just a it's just a uh, tool. To measure effort uh, and when you go to failure pretty much all the time uh, you make it relatively simple uh, I don't know how to calculate a 5 RIR I don't even it goes back to me not even being able to calculate anything under uh, RPE 8 um, so for me uh, 8 and above is that sweet spot where uh, density and thickness and strength happens. Um, maybe if I calculated a 5 RIR and did more sets with that, that could work. But I'm trying not to have my workouts too voluminous as I do train in the morning. Or if I do train at night, it's relatively late at night. And then that takes away uh, family time and chill out time for me and my wife, which I already sacrifice uh, a good bit of while we're uh, while I'm training um, so I'm very thankful she understands my passion obviously there's things that we can both work on as far as understanding this passion and how it relates to family but that's a whole other conversation for another day but in any event went up pretty heavy on the hammer strength incline press um, nothing too crazy and then moved on to dips uh, I was going to do flies and dips, but it just dawned on me that both are stretching movements. So there's no real need for me to do both. There's no real need for uh, you to do both, right? So I picked dips for the simple fact that I think it's a good all around uh, chest builder. It provides a great stretch. And also on top of that, you're still hitting uh, your triceps making that not an isolation movement, but a compound movement using your own body weight uh, It took me a while to get to the form that I'm using now and I feel pretty good using it So that's an, one more thing that I want to 
that I want to touch on. Um, you know, guys, I'm still trying to work that full range of motion as advised by Dr. Mike Israel. But also you have to work in that range of motion that is comfortable for you. So if you have injuries or any aches, niggles, pains and things of that, and there's only a certain uh, range of the repetition that works with you, then you need to stay within that 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 range, that that movement range for that repetition, right? Because if you try to exaggerate it uh, too much, you may end up with an injury. Now you may not. I don't know, but I know as far as I go, uh, I I I'm playing it safe right now. Um, as I get stronger, uh, things will obviously change. Uh, moving on to laterals here. So when I'm doing laterals, this is something that I want uh, people to really, really keep in mind. With exercises like laterals, you want to keep the work density high. And when I say keep the work density high, I mean you want to keep your rest period short, basically. With these, I did around about 30 to 45 seconds rest for about five sets. I just really wanted to pump the shoulder up with a lot of blood before I went on to my behind the neck presses with uh, the hammer strength machine. Guys, like I said, keep when it comes to exercises like this, and you'll see why laterals later on in the video, you want to keep your rest periods low. I feel that exercises like these work best within that realm, and then that way you're able to warm up your shoulders and then get some good uh, metabolites, you get a good burn, you get all that inside your muscles so you can move on to the heavy pressing and if you can use uh, a decent amount of weight that's going to provide more muscle damage and then the next thing you know you'll have bigger fuller rounder delts so anyway a word on this exercise um, this is probably the best shoulder builder out there um, and very much an alternative for me because I do not like dumbbell pressing I've tried it I suck at it I'm not doing it no more um, this or the Smith machine is something that I definitely think that everyone should have in their repertoire. I think that everyone should uh, use it and you know just always refining your training to make sure you find the movements that are best for you. This shoulder press is what's best for me and there are other shoulder presses that I like uh, sometimes I will do them but this one is the best uh, one for me so I'm going to keep using it and if you've never used it or you're kind of on the fence about it I suggest you guys use it too uh, so we did about three sets here uh, two work sets one back off set that I didn't film because no one really cares about the back off sets and I'm trying to get it strong to where I'm handling two plates and a quarter eventually three plates so there you have it today's uh, session uh, concluded with Y laterals uh, nothing too crazy here just uh, face a free motion machine and do some laterals uh, you want to make sure you emphasize the negative you want to make sure you get those uh, those shoulders not shoulders those hands above your head a little bit or at your head and then just aim for strong contraction inside delt so there you go but uh that's how my push session went down this morning. Uh, I thank you guys for watching. I thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop them down below. I have no hesitation in helping you guys. Got a new program coming out in November, so I hope you guys be. I want you guys to stay on lookout for that. Uh, but until then, we'll get a back session in, and uh, we'll see how things go this weekend. All right, take care. Peace.